game, Ashcroft Phoenix can give Eric a little bit of staying power. Both players are taking a look at their opening hands. It looks like Rajah might be on six cards, and he is. There's waiting for the green light. We'll be underway here in just a moment. Rajah will be on the play. He's got a Temple of Malady to begin things here in our semifinals from Indianapolis. He'll leave that card on top. We'll go Reels way. It's a manic influence. That's a painful start. But Elvis Visionary is, pro excuse me, Elvis Mystic is probably worth it. This Here's is the most powerful opening the deck has. It really is. Here's another Temple. This actually allows you to play Goblin Rabbit Master on turn two and start going wild. Really potent opening here, and this is a vulnerability of Bob's on control. They start off the game with just a lot of lands that come to play tap. They don't interact that easily early on, and a turn two Rabble Master here from Eric puts Raja under a lot of pressure. It might be a mountain. He'll just have a couple of lands to choose from here. So there is a mountain. Here's a Death Mist Raptor. So no Goblin Rabble Master as we head Sullivan's way. Sansep Citadel the draw. Lands do not appear to be the problem here for Sullivan at all. So we'll see if he can find some action spells. You see the Siege Rattle and a Hero's Downfall in hand. Rill will take a point. Perhaps it's time for a Rabble Master? Looks like maybe a Den Protector. Here's an attack for three. Ravage Highlands will gain real life. Someone does have a copy of Bioblight in hand that he can cast. Yeah, and it might look a little curious for Eric to play the more pre-combat, but the logic there is if he goes move into combat, attack with just Deathmith Raptor and not with the Elvish Mystic, Raja might take that opportunity to use a removal spell on the Elvish Mystic and eat up Eric's entire turn. That would be a disaster. So he kind of has to do it up front, even though it looks a little weird. Here is Siege Rhino. Solomon back to 20. Reel down to 15. Now we do head Reel's way. He'll take a draw here. See if Deathness Raptor wants to keep tri trucking on in. Here's Thunderbreak Regent. He's going to D up a little bit here. Well, Eric's hand is all spells. Normally, he's the aggressor in this matchup, but he might have a better late game at this point because Raja's Bulligan and Eric just has a lot of high-impact four-mana plays in his hand. Ashcloud Phoenix, I believe, another copy of Thunderbreak Regent, so he's happy to settle in for a little bit. If Raja wants to attack, he'll trade, and if Raja doesn't attack, well, maybe Eric attacks with the Death Disruptor the following turn and applies some real pressure. There's Temple. Take a look at the top card. Legacy Premier IQ players, we have a top eight. We'll become the bottom card here for Sullivan. He's going to pass the turn back with Hero's Downfall at the ready. In second place with 18 points, Evan Smith. Eric's hand is just loaded with power right now. Yeah, the only thing is he can only really play one spell a turn right now. That's really the only weakness. There's the hero's downfall. Thunderbreak region will deal a little bit of damage. Raja's way. There's another Thunderbreak region. This card certainly demands a removal spell. Yep. And Eric is still kind of managing the damage race with Death Miss Raptor back on defense. In seventh place, Dan Mercer. No. And in eighth place, we have... Another hero's downfall was the draw. Legacy players, if you made top, that, top eight and you do not currently have your deck, please come up to this left side of the stage now so that you can perform that deck check. Here comes Siege Rhino. The there is a block. Will be going up a little bit of trample damage. Any second now. Please take the time to verify your final place. Those will be final in five minutes. Looks like it's time for Corsair of Crew Fix. Take a look at the top card. It's a hero's downfall. There's a land, a trigger. Gain a little life with the Corsair. I believe Sullivan's last card in hand is just the hero's downfall they drew for the turn. Now, there's nothing wrong from Raja's side drawing all these heroes' downfalls. And in fact, uh, he's happy to do so. But Eric has such an advantage in just 
how many spells he has left in his hand versus Raja, that he can weather the storm of these removal spells. Typically, these are the type of draws that are going to be hard for Eric to beat, but he's just working with so many more resources because you see six lands on Raja's side, three lands on Eric's side, and Raja Mulligan. And these one-for-one -one trades are actually taxing Raja a lot more than Eric. Tassiger on top of the deck here for Sullivan. Hero's downfall, the draw. Courser, of course, the card providing the information. And every card that Eric brings to bear just takes enormous chunks out of Raja's life total also. It's not like he's getting hit for one here or two here. It's, it's increments of four. And the more and more of these shots he takes, well, now Crater's Claw starts becoming a factor. And as an added benefit, Eric's going to be working with perfect information probably for the rest of the game because Raja, the top of Raja's deck is going to be revealed. He's empty-handed. There's Hero's Downfall. This allows Solomon to attack. Pass the turn back. Rule draw a card. Rule's in the market for at least one more land, you have to imagine. Yeah. Now, this is uh, a little awkward for Raja to be taking the attacking position, but he's, his hand is sort of forced. He knows if this game goes on for a couple more turns, he's not that likely to win because Eric has so many more spells in hand, and once Eric just starts drawing some mana, he's going to deploy some really powerful stuff. So he's capitalizing on the fact that Eric is bottlenecked on mana, that he's had to tap a mana confluence several times over the course of this game, and he's going to just try to get on the offensive a little bit. It's not where he wants to be in the matchup, but that's where this game has directed him. I think he's left with almost no choice, as you mentioned. Just too tough of a spot. There's a Draconic Roar. We're feeling Storm Breath Dragon. Now Crater's Claws is going to finish off that Courser. Looks like Rill wants to slop, slow down any Courser advantage. On top of that, he just wants there to be one less attacker in play. Yeah. Update for you guys on the Ketter versus Kelly match. Jamie Kelly with Mardu Dragons does win game number one over Kent Ketter. So if we do have the ability to jump that way after this match, we'll try to. We keep our attention here in Sullivan, whose draw was a Tassiger for the turn. And there is Tassiger. It'll remove everything but Siege Rhino from the graveyard. And now you get a Tassiger activation on the main phase, so... Thoughtseize... And Siege Rhino. You get Thought Seize. Yes, you do. <laughs> I got a really redundant hand. You yeah. get Thought Seize. I got Storm Breath Dragons for days. Oh, okay. Really redundant. I didn't think it was going to be like that. But. Yeah. Eight to eight. Real need to land. How'd he do? Oh, it didn't come into play. It was kind of a land. It was a copy of Elvish Mystic. Now, there are some dangerous draws, though. Oh, yeah. Vile Blight, particularly. That was just a land. Uh, I'm with you, my friend. You, you get Thoughtseize again. You get Thoughtseize again. Yeah. players, your standings after round six and pairings for round number seven are going up both online and out in the hallway. You can find those pairings online at pairings.starsoft. Really, really close game here. Jeez. Yep. Uh, and this is so odd, too, because it's such a role reversal the way these two decks usually play out. Mm -hmm. Eric the aggressor and Raja is the control deck, but uh, the, the mulligan here and the... The oddness is just the way the resources are broke. Raj is trying to close out the game on the short term. The Tasker activation. Now he's going to be attacking and love the attack. But on this turn, on this turn, I'm blocking with that morph. I am too, because if Eric takes this hit, he falls to four. Mm -hmm. If he has a tap the mana confluence for mana to cast the Stormbred Dragon, he falls to three. And then Siege Rhino is a now. Also, Rill is basically priced into casting his, his Storm Breath Dragon. There's no guarantee that his draw is going to be a land that enters the battlefield untapped. So he has to tap two Elvis Mystics and three lands. Yes. Storm Breath Dragon's attacking, obviously. 
And so then, now it's four to four, and if Solomon draws or moves, well, which we know he has a lot of in his deck, it slides out. Now, Solomon did not cast his Thoughtseize, but I don't really think that changes very much. Now, that land area in the battlefield untapped is absolutely crucial right now. Yes, that was a big draw. That said, I believe you still want to leave two creatures back on defense if you're real. You want to play the Stormbreath Dragon, you, it, it is risky to go down to three, obviously, via Manic Influence. But you also know your opponent has a couple of Siege Rhinos in the graveyard, so it's not like they're drawing to four of them. I think, I think that Solomon's only drawing to two of them right now. Well, he's potentially drawing to one via Tassiker, because I think Siege Rhino is the last spell there. That might be part of the reason that Solomon didn't play the Thoughtseize. Yeah, he just can't allow Eric to give him Thoughtseize again. Yep. So how does Rill pay for this Stormbreath Dragon, I think, is very, very interesting. Do you do it with Manic Influence so you can leave two creatures back? Yes, oh. because there's more removal spells than there are Siege Rhinos. Sure. Looks like Rill's going to go down to three. There's a Stormbreath Dragon. And there's no guarantee that Raja can even activate Tassiker and cast the Siege Rhino in the graveyard. Absolutely. Because the mana's short. Yep. I, I think this is the best thing that that Eric can do, but there's been some risks taken, I think, by not jump blocking the previous turn. We'll see how it plays out. Sullivan maybe consider cracking that fetch land right now. Thin out his deck a little bit. It's been a tough spot here for both players these past couple of turns. The thing is, uh, Raja arguably wants a land because then he's at eight mana and then he has the out of Tassiker reveals no spells, and Siege Rhino is a kill. Well, he drew a land. I think you know how this, this sentence yep. ends. It, it, there's a battlefield tapped. Perfect. Yeah. But I like not cracking there, because an eighth mana is very good for Raja on this turn. Here's an activation. Didn't get a great look at those cards. It's a copy of, ooh, ultimate price. It's not real is obviously terrified. Modern Premier IP players. He gives him ultimate price. Quick note, well, the Siege Rhino is very risky because if, if Raja has an untapped land, that's the end of the game. Yeah, ultimate price might be the, the perfect card to give. Oh, if you're Raja, you're actually happy you got ultimate price back. You have an answer to Stormbreath Dragon now, and you can Thought Seize away the other Stormbreath Dragon, but that puts you to two, and then you. If you die to those Elvish Mystics. Boy, yep. this is tough. Eric doesn't know that Raja doesn't have the untapped land. Yep. It's very risky to give him Siege Rhino because if he just goes, uh, okay, Lenore, ways kill you. Yep. That's a pretty bad ending to this game. So ultimate price is not the card that Eric wanted to see, but the Siege Rhino is so risky. Yeah, I guess Thoughtseize is actually off the table here because in order to cast both of those spells, because there's no Orb Organ play, you have to crack the fetch line, go to three. Cast Thoughtseize, go to one. You thought you thought away the Stormbreath Dragon, that's in Rill's hand. You ultimate price away the Storm of Dragon that's in play, you attack with your Tassiker, but then he can just jump block and then kill you on the way back because you're at one. So this is a really, really difficult situation here for Solomon. He's going to play Thoughts. He's take care of that Stormbreath Dragon. He's down to two. I don't want to play the Temple. Yeah, I don't want to play the land and give away the information. Really yeah. going to draw a card. He's just doing this. Yep. As he should. Make it easy if you can. He's going to attack with everything, and Eric Rill's going to get the job done here again for one here. Over Raja Sullivan, Green Red Dragons up a game over Obs on Control. Very entertaining one there. Oh, that was a back and forth affair, and it's weird to see that dramatic of a roll shift between these two decks. Usually Raja is all about playing defense and using removal spells and trying to get to the late game. Eric's trying to win the game quickly, and we just had this odd game where those roles were reversed, and Eric was barely able to squeeze it out. We take a look at the sideboards here between both players, and we will start with Raja Sullivan, and he's got a self-inflicted wound, an ultimate price, a Glare of Heresy, a Dramokas Command, Murderous Cut, two Drown and Sorrows, and then Hostilities, two Duress, a Mastery of the Unseen, a Read the Bones, a Soren Solemn Visitor, and a Johnny Mentor of Heroes, and a Garrick Apex Predator. A bunch of ones and twos. What do we like? The removal. <laughs> the things that kill dragons or green creatures. Pretty smart there. Yep, self-inflicted wound. I think that the Murderous Cut, the ultimate price, and the end hostilities are the obvious ones. I think there's an uh, uh, there's an opportunity to bring in Garrick here. I don't really like the other Planeswalkers that much because with the amount of haste that's in Eric's deck, it's pretty easy for him to kill those kind of cards in a lot of spots, and they're low impact. But Garrick is so powerful, even being activated once, that I think it's a reasonable card to be bringing in. Take a look at a real sideboard. This Den Protector, Reclamation Sage, and Outpost Siege. A Twin Bolt, a Wild Slash, a Chandra Pyromaster. He's also got a Roast over there, and two 
Arc Lightnings, two Barrage of Boulders, two Nissa World Wakers, and then two Xenagos, the Revla. He wants those Planeswalkers real bad. Uh, he needs other angles of attack here because Raja is very well equipped to handle creatures on an individual basis. A little bit harder for him to handle Planeswalkers over the long term. I also like bringing in the Outpost Siege for similar reasons. It's just a, a card that lets him play the longer game a little bit better. And the one Roast answers Siege Rhino and Tassiker. For the Outpost Siege, do you want to try to go toe-to-toe? -to -toe? Well, I think that you can cut a lot of your low-impact threats. I think you have a lot of, you know, removal spells here, like the four Draconic Roars. Those are really easy to cut. And then I think some of the other threats here are, are not very impactful. So you can cut down some of your mana acceleration, expecting the game to go on for a long time. You don't need as much mana in the deck. And I think that he can hang in a later game with some of these cards. It's not like Raja locks him out. You know what I mean? He, he's, they play a pretty long game here. Eric can answer some of those cards. He can get two for one a couple times and not be locked out of the game. So I think it's worth slowing down the deck to have cards like Outpost Siege in there. These players will get ready here for game number two. And of course, we are kicking off season three of the Open Series right now. You see the leaderboard here. Kevin Jones, Jim Davis, they already qualified for our Players' Championship. Jones did win season two. And Davis did win season one as far as points are concerned on the Open Series. Ross Merriam right now with 186 Open Series points. He's leading things. Danny Jessup, Joe Lissette, Gerard Fabiano, Chris Van Meter, they're in the battle for things. And Chris Van Meter actually just made the top eight of the Legacy Premier IQ. So I so Chris should be passing Gerard this weekend. Yep. The the race is really bunched up right now. Not a lot of points separating these two. In fact, the distance between Ross and Chris Van Meter is less than an open series win. So uh, season three is a very long season. Hard to predict exactly what's going to happen. It's possible one of the five people outside of this group can make a run at it. But I think you're looking at this group most likely as the people who are competing for the season three point invite. Brad Nelson, of course, the defending champion of the Players' Championship. He'll be in Roanoke at the end of the year. Jeff Hoagland was here this weekend, but things didn't go to plan for him. Andrew Jessup, Logan Mize, Hunter Nance, Eric Hawkins, Rudy Briscoe, Todd Anderson, and Matthew, Matthew Tickle. They round out the top 16 players. Some new faces there. Some players looking to get to the Players' Championship. Exactly, and that's what's going to happen over the course of the year. All points from last year are going to fall off. New points are going to be added, and we're going to see some fresh faces in the top 16 and the top 32 of the leaderboard. One you don't see there is Caleb Scherer. He was actually number 17 in the Open Series leaderboard coming into this tournament. Uh, did not have a good tournament with the Tarka Red, but he also made the top eight of the Legacy Open. I know he likes to play Storm in that format, so he's getting some Open Series points. He's working his way towards two buys and maybe an at-large bid at the end of the year as well. Something that Eric Rill almost accomplished and Kent Ketter did accomplish last year on the Open Series. Eric just kind of faltered towards the back half of 2014. Yeah. But at, at various points, it looked like he was going to go to the Players' Championship. It was very close in Season 2 and Season 3. Season 2, he cannot overcome Chris Van Meter and his run with Green Red Dragons. And in Season 3, he couldn't stop the Miracle Mastermind and Joe Lissette, who broke things open, and he got himself qualified. And I got a good feeling we're going to see both those guys back at the Players' Championship again this year. Though, uh, you know, Joe's definitely got an uphill battle in front of him, that's for sure. For sure. Solomon will take a look at his opening hand right now. And it looks like he might be setting it back, and he is. Rill, he's on the draw. We'll see if he likes the opening hand. Well, that face said no. But his hands say yes. Indeed. <laughs> it looks like he is keeping. <laughs> What are, these playing, what are these players playing for? You may be wondering. Well, first place, as we've mentioned a few times, $5,000, 25 Open Series points, and an invite to our Season 3 Invitational will be in New Jersey. Second place, this bad boy is $2,000, 20 Open Series points, and an invite to our Season 3 Invitational. You can see third and fourth, as we only got four players left of our 454 that showed up in Indianapolis. And you can see why the gap gets made up so fast on our leaderboard races and so forth. It's just one Open Series event is enough for some really big spikes for people to climb up the leaderboard or potentially fall off their spots in the top 16 or top 32. So for these players that are left, at least $1,000. Not a bad weekend. Not shabby. Give it to Pops for Father's Day. Looks like game number three is taking place in the backup match right now. Kent Ketter has tied things up against Jamie Kelly. It's been over at Nicky Blaine's. I mean, you know. Do whatever you want, $1,000. Yeah. It's, it's yours. Money. Just money. don't spend it all in one place. That's all we ask. Temple of Silence. Unless it's at StarCityGames.com, <laughs> number one retailer for Magic Cards on the internet. You know it. The Temple of Malady, right here. You like Legacy or Vintage? Man, we can chew through a thousand bucks pretty fast. <laughs> <laughs> here is a Thought Seize from Real. An Elvish Mystic, a Rattleclaw Mystic. A couple copies of Draconic Roar, Goblin Rapplemaster. Oh, the Thunderbreak Regent. 
what she'll find here, along with that Kratos Claws. No lands. No lands. Capital One lander. I like this keep just fine, though. Uh, the uh, Thoughtseize, Hero's Downfall, Abzan Charm style decks. You got to keep some sketchy hands. A Temple and an Elvish Mystic to me is, is enough. And it's not like the mana requirements on this hand are that heavy. It's not a bunch of Stormbat Dragons in the hand. One more land, he's doing just fine. I'm okay with this keep. You're on the draw, too. Yeah. I'm on the draw of the Temple and two mana accelerants. Oh, boy, he's going after the Elvish Mystic. Love it. Yeah. <laughs> I'll show you. Yep. See what the draw is. Forest had it. Mystic, your turn. I'll be, I'll be interested to see if this Mystic makes it through the turn. Well, it, you know, if you're going to kill the first one with the Thoughtseize, you kind of have to do this. Yep. Ultimate Price will take care of that. Sansev Citadel. Does real have. Yep. Yeah. I don't think it was land number three. Yeah. All right. Elvis, enough. Elvis Mystic number two. Pass the turn back. Solomon. Got a couple copies of Obson Charmer there, and then Hostility is clean up the board if it ever comes to that. Looks like he's going to start with the Temple of Malady. I think it's going to come to that pretty soon. I, I think that Eric's likely to play the Rabble Master next turn, and that might be enough for Raja to Abzan Charm for two cards, try to find land number five, and Hostility is away the board, and play top of deck against top of deck. Rose was the draw step. Rabble Master is the play. Goblin on the way. And here's an attack for one. Here is Abzan Charm. Pay two left to draw two cards. And now we go back to Solomon, who's drawn a copy of Hero's Downfall. And a Tasker, too. A lot of removal in the hand and hostilities. Way to draw more cards. Raja's mulligan has panned out just fine. It's a windswept teeth. There is a forest. Here's in hostilities. That's going to clean it all up. So now Rill's got some real work to do as far as rebuilding is concerned. There's a temple. That's a good start. That car's going to stay on top. Pass the turn back over to Solomon. Solomon does have a threatened tasker in hand. Picked up a copy of Temple of Silence. You see the removal there in Abzan Charm and Hero's Downfall. And what's really nice about this is he can... I suppose he doesn't have enough resources here to cast the tasker and activate. It's too much of his graveyard. And Eric, I believe, has Roast in hand. Yeah, he does have Roast at the ready. Here's a temple. But with nothing really going on on Eric's side of the table, Raja can just, if he wants to, just say go. And Abzan Charm. It looks like he is going to play Tassiger. He plays Tassiger, removes everything, and now leaves the mana available. So right. This is not bad. This, this is okay. You know, if the, if the Tassiger is going to die, he, you, know, you hope for Raja, when he activates Tassiger, he gets a card back. Yep. Just keep playing that card advantage game. You know, you have an Abzan Charm, you draw two more cards that way. You have a Hero's Downfall answer or a threat. And just sort of slowly but surely accrue enough value to overwhelm Eric. There's a Haven of the Spirit Dragon. Eric finally starting to find some lands here. Draconic Roars. Show you Thunderbreak region to get Tasker off the table. Mm. He's going to play Obzon Charm to save his creature. Yikes. Now, oh, boy, that, that's a giant beating. We're talking seven toughness, a six, seven. That's a real clock now, yep. too. Real did get to get in a bunch of damage there with the Draconic Roars, which is certainly nice. Solomon's down to eight, but there's a 6-7 task around the table now. It's coming into the red zone. And Raja's leftovers are pretty close to perfect here in Dem Protector and Hero's Downfall. There's Thunderbreak Regent. Keep in mind, Real does have a Crater's Claws in hand. Yep. We could be getting to Fireball territory because if... Raja kills Thunderbreak region, targets it, he goes down to five. So if you're real, you're hoping he doesn't find any way to gain life. We're talking Corsair of Crufix, Siege Rhino. This burnout plan could actually work. And Eric's got a bit of a, a cushion to play with right now. He's at 14. Raja's attacking him in increments of six, so he goes to eight, goes to two, assuming that Raja's not adding any to the board. Might have to add a little something like a face of den protector, perhaps, try yeah. to get this game over with. 
at this point, though, Rill's got to think about what to give him back with his Tasker activation. There's an Obs on Charm and a Courser down there. Well, I think it's got to be the Courser Crucifix because Obs on Charm is just adding too much to the clock. Roger gets to go untap. Pump this if he wants to. And now it's a two-turn clock. Another Obs on Charm in the draw step. So two Charms, a Hero's Downfall, and a Dent Protector. That's the grip. So he wants to use these resources. Has access to six mana, so he's in two spell per turn territory. I'm a fan of just killing Thunderbreak Regent, pumping up the Tassiger, making this a two turn game. Yeah, Rill's not a. He's not blocking. Solomon is charming. Take eight, push you to six. And Rajah is working with some good information from that discard spell earlier in the game. Looks like he might be using charm or downfall. I think, yeah, I, I'm perfectly fine with this. Yeah. Which is just pass the turn back. Don't forget, too creative. A mountain was the draw for the turn. Real gonna attack. Yep, there's your removal spell. It's an Obzon charm. So I'm going to go down to five. That's going to be exile. No rebuys there with the Haven. And that Critter's Clause is currently a point short. And Roger's leftover is still Hero's downfall. He's got another, he's got a blocker covered. Yep, there's Thunderbreak Regent. And I, oh. Ooh. So. He's supposed to clause for two. I think he needs to clause for two there. Yep. Yep. If he claws for, if he claws for two, you put him down to three, and then Raja just has to attack. You get a chump block for sure. You get a chump block, and you get another turn to draw into something. Yep. So that's tough there. Looks like I guess I think real, real. You see, he's shaking his head right now. I think he may have realized the mistake that he just made there. I mean, it's not, it's no guarantee because if he doesn't have a removal spell, you get to chump, draw towards a land, and claws him for five. Yeah. So I can understand, I can understand that line of play as well. It's not as clear cut as it looks, because we of course see the hero's downfall in Raja's hand. Yeah, I, you know, he gets to choose what portion of the deck he gets to lose to in that spot essentially. Yeah. I think it's very, very likely that Raja has a removal spell. It's worth the critter's claws risk, but as it stands, going to game three. Well, we'll take a look at the sideboards one more time here and see if anything's going to change on the play or on the draw here. Keep in mind, Real's going to be on the play here. So do you see anything with those 15 cards that maybe you do want since he's on the play now? Not really. It, what's crazy is we, we keep talking like, okay, Raj is the control deck. You want these Planeswalkers. You want to be going long here. You want that Dem Protector, you know, and so on and so forth. That's not how these two games have played out. I mean, Raja was damage racing in game one, and in game two just pumped up a Tassiker outside the range of road removal and killed Eric again before Eric could deploy all the cards in his hand. So I still think that Eric wants to settle up for a long game. I think the two games we've seen thus far have been outliers, but it has been bizarre that you would expect a slow game on Raja's side of the table, and it's been anything but for the first two. Well, these players are already starting to shuffle up and get ready here for game number three. We'll talk about Star City Games game night very quickly. It is the month of June, of course, so the bunny is available at the local stores who do participate in this fantastic program. And we'll have some other cool stuff coming here for July and August, as you'll see in just a second. Yeah, we got our kits already lined up. This is the June kit. You're running out of time to win these rewards if you want to. You can always go to the website and check out where game night is being held closest to you. This is the July kit. If you're looking to get signed up for August, if you're a retailer looking to bring this program to your store, head over to starcitygames.com slash game night or get into contact with your Star City Games organized play representative. What do we call this guy? Furious George. Furious George. Perfect. Perfect. Great name. Mm -hmm. Furious George in the house, stealing a, a, a lot of bananas. Not a right. small amount, a lot. A lot of bananas. And he is on the run. I cannot wait till we see the full play map, the blown up image. My guess being chased by Ben Friedman in a safari outfit. Yep. But it's it could the only, be... The only Magic player we know who wears safari gear. Enthusiastic about safari gear. But as I said, it could actually just be animals in the jungle chasing, mm -hmm. them, chasing, the, chasing Furious George, but... 
certainly being chased. Oh, for sure. There's no way George is not being chased right. there. Because he is running with purpose. Yeah. Our backup match, again, if we have time to jump that way, it's Kent Ketter playing Green Black Dragons. He's the number four overall seed against Jamie Kelly, who is playing Mardu Dragons, number eight overall seed. They're in game number three. Kelly won game number one. Ketter was able to tie things up, so Kelly was on the play for game three. We'll see if he's able to get the job done and move Mardu Dragons along to the finals. And here we have Rill on Green Red Dragons. Raja Sullivan on Abs on Control. Dragons, really the talk of the tournament thus far. A lot of different Dragons decks. We had Teamer, we had Esper, we had a lot of Mardu Dragons too. Thunderbreak region, very popular this weekend. Been all over the place. Yeah. Let's see if Real likes his opening hand as he takes a look. It's kind of got that Siege Rhino feel of if this thing doesn't get killed, that's awesome. And if it gets killed, still pretty sweet a good percent of the time. A Temple of Abandon is where Real starts things. Solomon with just a copy of Land War Waits. This is a bad sign for, for Raja already. You want to be playing lands that come to play tapped early. Probably indicates he's light on mana. Looks like he's doing all right. He's got a Plains and a Windswept Teeth over there. Just an odd hand with none of his temples or Sansep Citadels, I suppose. Yeah, it's rare. Well, Mardu Dragons is on to the finals. Jamie Kelly takes down Kent Ketter. Two games to one. He'll be playing the winner of this match here between Eric Rill and Raja Sullivan. A great tournament for Kent with his Green Black Dragons deck. Certainly very powerful, but not able to take down Mardu Dragons and those Crackling Dooms. Could potentially be shaping up for a Storm Breath Dragon Mirror match in the finals. Indeed. Felt like we had a lot of those last year. A wooded foothills here for real. He's going to go down to 18. That'll be a mountain. Let's see what Reel's play is going to be this turn. Looks like he might have a death miss wrapped around the way. Look there. Looks like Eric's been drafting a lot at his local store based on the uh, lands he's got in play over there. Hey, you know, everyone just kind of does their own thing, man. A little white border here, a little black border there. Yeah. Playing some sealed deck tournaments. <laughs> Raja, he paid out for his basics. Mm -hmm. Went over to the side draft table in between rounds, you know. However, got him, he got him. Indeed. Elspeth the draw. I guarantee you didn't buy him. <laughs> <laughs> Courser, that's the card that gets played. Obs on Charm on top of the deck. Rill will take a draw step. Some awkwardness on the colored mana situation over there on it, Roger's side. It is tough right now. No double black with. Drown and Hero's Downfall in hand. Death Miss Raptor number two here for Rill. He'll sacrifice with a foothills to play an Elvish Mystic, pass the turn back. Drown not looking good this game anyway. Rill going to search up a basic forest, of course. We head over to Sullivan. Is there a land on top? Nope. That's about the worst case scenario. Indeed. Not only is it a, not a land, it is a thought seize. Now Sullivan might have to rock the Obzon Charm targeting himself, and that'll cost three life to cast. And he'll have no follow-up play this turn. Yeah, it's extremely unlikely that he does. I mean, there's the chance that he just draws into a Land of War Waste that he could play and then cast a Thought Seize, but I don't even know if he'd want to do that. Exactly. I mean, he's falling to, to 12 here. The Thought Seize would be 10. Den Protector, top card of the deck. Oh, there's All right, well, we'll find out. Yep. <laughs> Up to 13. Temple of Silence. Do you want to cast that Thought Seize? No time like the present, right? I think it's cast Thought Seize or discard the hand size, and yep. I think this is good enough to cast. It's really painful. Yep, go to 10. Crater's Claws, Gotham Rabble Master. See you later, Claws. Time to untap. Big draw here for real. If you're able to find a Storm Breath Dragon, it's huge. Doesn't look like that was the case. Looks like it was a copy of Thunderbreak region. Here come the Raptors. Solomon down to four. 
the nice thing here for real is you know your opponent's next land is going to end in the battlefield tapped most likely. Yeah, it would have to be untapped white mana off the top of the deck plus end hostilities. The problem is I, I think that Eric needs to keep casting stuff because he could just lose to things like Siege Rhino and removal spells. It's uh -huh. dangerous, but th there's a lot of danger in waiting too. Ob's on charm on top of the deck. Yeah, that's a big sigh of relief there for Eric. Can Sullivan climb back? The thing that makes playing a top side control really tough is that their spells are so powerful. The mana is a little slow out of the gate sometimes, or it doesn't cooperate, as you can see in this particular game. But you play a land with a Courser, you go up to five, you play a Siege Rhino, all of a sudden you've got the ground sort of doing okay. It's true the Deathmiss Raptor, but. He's having some trouble against the Flyer there in Thunderbreak region. The, the problem here is I, I feel like Raj has got to get to two spells a turn somehow because he's so far behind, and yep. his hand's not conducive to that right now. Can't forget that Rill does have a Goblin Rabble Master left in hand. You see Elspeth on top of the deck. And Rill also gets, you know, this cool thing called draw steps. There's Siege Rhino. Going to have to take one to cast it. So down to four, up to seven. Take a draw. Didn't get a great look at it. Oh, it's a big one. There's a Rabble Master. Everybody's coming in. It, the blocks are forced. It has to be on death, Miss Raptor. Yep. Take four, five, six. Lose your board. Pass the turn back. I know you're drawing Elspeth. Do you have end hostilities? And Haven off the top there means where Eric would at least be able to cast the Thunderbreak region on the way back. Mm -hmm. Gives him a little bit of insulation. Without end hostilities, there's nothing to be done here. Yeah, Raj is going to take a long look at his hand. It's four lethal attackers. And unfortunately for our on control player, it looks to be the end of his particular tournament. You see he's going to lay out his hand here in just a moment. Sorry, five lethal attackers because the Raptor actually didn't die against yeah, the Courser. Against the Courser. Yeah, and that is going to do it. Eric Rill is going to win this match here over Raja Sullivan. Two games to one. Green Red Dragons is moving on to the finals. Takes care of Obs on control. He'll be playing against Jamie Kelly, who is playing Mardu Dragon. So a little Storm Breath Dragon mirror action. Chris Van Meter, where are you? In the top eight of the Legacy IQ. Oh, probably playing Stormbird Dragon. I know then. you asked that question rhetorically, but that, that we actually do know where he is but, right now. But then you answered it. So. Right. So perfect. Here we go. Appreciate that. No Eric worries. Grill, congratulations to you. You're on the finals. On to the finals. Excuse me. Looking for a fifth Open Series title. Yeah, awesome. And this should be a